During Bleach's Thousand Year Blood War arc, we learn about a new Quincy army that have been hiding within the shadows over the past 1,000 years. They are referred to as the Wandenreich, and they are led by the father of all Quincy, Yuhabak. In chapter 631 and 632, we get a flashback of Basby's childhood, which reveals to us a darker side of the Quincy history, where Basby's family castle that they had lived in was burnt to the ground. The crime was committed by none other than Yuhabak. During this time, Yuhabak had been alive for over 200 years, and he was slowly building up his army. His soldiers were referred to as the Empire of Light. During the anime exclusive flashback sequences that we receive, Uryu remembers how his grandfather Soken Ishida had been upholding the traditional ways of the Quincy, as opposed to the ways of Yuhabak. This is showcased via the Thousand Year Blood War arc with the newly introduced Quincy utilizing abilities that we have never seen Uryu use before. We had no idea that concepts like holy forms had even existed. In in this video, I'm going to be diving deep into the traditional ways of the Quincy versus the new ways of the Quincy which have been adopted by Yuhabak's army. I'll be answering questions like why didn't Soken Ishida join Yuhabak's army, and how the Quincy who had followed Yuhabak ended up becoming so powerful. I'll be examining all of the information about the Quincy from the light novels, the manga, as well as new scenes in the anime in order to explain why Yuhabak was eliminating Quincy's before he had fought against the Soul Society originally 1000 years ago. Be sure to stick around until the end of the video as I'll be revealing Soken Ishida's role in all of this. So join me as I break down the differences between the old school Quincy versus Yuhabak's present day Invisible Empire or the Wandenreich, who of course serve as the main antagonistic forces of the Thousand Year Blood War arc. <laughs> From the very beginning of Bleach, we've always had a general idea about what it means to be a Quincy. The history of the Quincy is explained to us in the earliest parts of the manga, during Uryu's first confrontation with Ichigo. When Rukia asks Urahara about the Quincy in chapter 36, he remembers the Quincy as a long-lost race which was dedicated to fighting Hollows. He notes that they all had perished 200 years ago in the current timeline. This was because of their conflict with the Shinigami, who disagreed with the ways that the Quincy were eliminating Hollows. Shinigami used their Zanpakuto in order to cleanse the soul of a hollow as it then is sent to the Soul Society. While the Quincy, on the other hand, when they destroy a hollow, they completely destroy the soul that comes with it. If this happens in large numbers, then it would disrupt the balance of souls between the world of the living and the Soul Society. This was the cause of the conflict between the two groups, and it's what had led to the annihilation of the Quincy's, as the Shinigami took preventative measures in order to stop the collapse of the universe. Now we know that some Quincy's were able to survive and thrive within the world of the living, hiding their presence. Individuals like Uryu Ishida, Masaki Kurosaki, Kanai Katagiri, and Ryuken Ishida are confirmation of the surviving Quincy's. Among the survivors were pure-blooded Quincy's and mixed-blooded Quincy's. The pure-blooded Quincy's were held in high regard, and if possible, it was favourable for one pure-blooded Quincy to marry another. As we learn in the Everything But The Rain flashback arc that Ryuken was initially supposed to have an arranged marriage with Masaki, but after Masaki was tainted by the Hollow White, she had effectively become a mixed-blooded Quincy. And we know that Masaki ended up having a child with Ishin, while Ryuken ended up having a child with the mixed-blooded Kanai Katagiri. Now these traditional Quincy that I have been speaking about are a world apart from the ones that we see emerging from the Wandan Reich. In chapter 46, we see Uryu in a flashback with his grandfather Soken, as they discuss the annihilation of their ancestors. Uryu lightheartedly jokes about whether they can update their traditional Quincy garb. This comedic moment is a subtle hint at how Soken Ishida is steadfast in following the traditional ways of the Quincy to a T. It makes you wonder how different the life of the Ishida family would have been if Soken and his ancestors had submitted to Yuhabak's regime. Basby's flashback is revealed to us during chapters 631 and 632 as we understand more about Basby's childhood and the extermination of some Quincy families by Yuhabak's army. Now Yuha had seen fit to burn the homes of several Quincy's within the northern territories of the Empire of Light. Now we get a glimpse of how massive the Empire of Light was within episode 24 of Core 2 via a phenomenal anime exclusive flashback sequence which puts into perspective how big the Quincy's were over a thousand years ago. Now during this time Yuhabak was searching for Quincy's to be recruited into his army or to become his followers. One of the castles that he ended up burning down who had refused to join him was the family of Basby. From Basby's young perspective he had deemed Yuhabak to be a monster. There was some 
something different about Yule Buck because he did not use the conventional Quincy Bone arrow. Instead, he used other supernatural powers, which made the Quincy suspicious of his claim of being the father of all Quincy. My theory regarding this event is that Yule Buck had faced a lot of resistance from many Quincy who had followed the old ways. So can Ishida's family could have possibly been a part of the families who had rejected Yuho Buck. This is further evidenced within the flashback we get at the start of episode 24, where Ichibe tells Yuho Buck that there is still conflict amongst the Quincy, highlighting that there were divisions or sects within the Quincy, and Yuho Buck was struggling to unify the opposing ideologies. At some point, the other Quincy who had followed the traditional ways managed to survive being killed by Yuho Buck. After the Empire of Light was defeated by the original Gotei 13, the surviving Quincy were free to live as they pleased. The traditional ways of the Quincy had flourished, and this group of Quincy, I'm guessing, would have grown to a point where they had posed a threat to the Soul Society 200 years ago, and the Quincy annihilation was then orchestrated. Following this mass extermination, only a few surviving Quincy's would have remained. So members of the Ishida household, along with Masaki Kurosaki from the Kurosaki Quincy family, and the mixed-blooded Kanai Katagiri. We don't know if there are any other Quincy aside from these that I've mentioned, who make notable appearances during the Everything But The Rain flashback arc. There may have been more surviving mixed-blooded Quincy, but after Yuobak had casted Ashvalen, it had led to Uryu being the only surviving mixed-blooded Quincy and Ryuken being the only surviving pure-blooded Quincy. While Uryu was growing up, he was taught the traditional ways of the Quincy by Soken Ishida. For some reason, Ryuken had renounced the ways of the Quincy. I believe that this may have stemmed from his resentment towards Yuobak, who had casted Ashvalen, which had ended up killing his wife. Up until the Thousand Year Blood War arc, the range of Quincy abilities we had seen were limited. Primarily being tied to the use of bow and arrows, which were made up of reishi. Over the course of the 1000 years since his defeat, Yuhobak was building up his invisible empire by boosting up the numbers of his Sternritter and by regaining his power. We get a lengthy exposition dump in chapter 565 where Hashward explains to Uryu about the new age of the Quincy. It is revealed that since Yuhobak was very young, he had possessed the power to share a piece of his soul with others around him. And unlike other Quincy, he was unable to gather reishi from his surroundings. Instead, Yuobak had the power to share his powers with others. While he was a baby, Yuobak had shared his soul with those who had touched him. He ended up healing the ailments of several individuals in exchange for sharing a piece of his soul with them. Yuobak had later refined this ability by inscribing letters onto the soul of his underlings. He found this to be a more effective way of empowering those who follow him. This happens via a ritual where a Quincy will drink the blood of Yuobak, and they are then granted a special letter which forms the basis of their new ability called a shrift. An example of this is the letter A which is inscribed onto Uryu which stands for the antithesis which is his shrift ability. A shrift basically enhances a natural ability that a Quincy is already born with and following the death of an empowered Quincy the shrift will end up returning to Yuhobak as it empowers him further. Now the Quincy who worked under Yuhobak didn't just change in terms of the power and techniques that he utilized but their ideology was completely warped. Their traditional Quincy, on the other hand, who are represented by individuals like Soken Ishida, had believed in more of an harmonious existence. In chapter 46, we see that Soken had even tried to make peace talks with the Shinigami. He had proposed a new system of handling hollows. He wanted to work together with the Shinigami. His plan was to allow the Quincy to be the first responders, so that they could protect the humans from the hollows until the Shinigami could arrive in order to eliminate the hollow and cleanse their soul. This way, there's a happy middle ground that has been found where the Quincy have a role and the Shinigami have a role and ultimately the balance of souls between the worlds is maintained. Unfortunately, Soken Ishida's proposals had never been accepted despite his numerous attempts. In chapter 491, we learn that Soken Ishida had refused to accept the new ways of the Quincy, rejecting concepts like shrift abilities and holy forms. Instead, he had held on to the old lead steel transformation, which is heavily tied to the Sanrei glove, which we see Soken Ishida give to Uryu in in chapter 61. In chapter 674, we learned that Soken Ishida had escaped from the Quincy's hidden realm via a portal, as he had taken with him a device which had allowed him to traverse between the realms. This means that the Ishida family were hiding within the shadows of the Serete, and Soken Ishida escaped 200 years ago, thus avoiding the extermination of the pure-blooded Quincy, which had occurred at the same time. In the third episode of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime, we receive an anime-exclusive scene which reveals that Soken Ishida had kept a journal with information on the Wandenreich, Yuhobak, as well as the truth about the death of Uryu's mother. Uryu's grandfather ended up being killed
killed in battle from a group of giant hollows which ganged up on him. He had tried to hold off against them for as long as he could, waiting for the Shinigami to arrive, but they ended up arriving too late to save his life. Later, in chapter 123, Mairi reveals to Uryu that he was responsible for delaying the Shinigami who were meant to protect Soken Ishida. This was so that he could collect Soken Ishida's soul for research. He then went on to show the mutilated and dismembered body of Soken Ishida to Uryu, stating that by the end of the experimentation that he had done, very little was left of Soken Ishida's body. Contrastingly, the Quincy who follow under Yuhobak's vision have more of a radical ideology. Yuhobak perceives the Shinigami to be their sworn enemies, and the last thing that he would do is initiate peace talks between them. This difference in ideology between the traditional Quincy's and Yuhobak's Quincy's is very important in understanding the changes in the Quincy abilities, weaponry, and overall the objectives of the Quincy under Yuhobak's leadership. During the Thousand Year Blood War arc, we see the Sternritter defend themselves in battle by using a variety of different Reishi weapons. For example, during the anime exclusive flashback sequence of episode 24, one of Yuhobak's female bodyguards actually whips out a Reishi gun during Yuhobak's meeting with Ichibe. Now, this was during Yuhobak's younger days where he was much more naive, but this confirms that the modernization of the Quincy had started to occur before Yuhobak's army was defeated by the original Gotei 13. There are countless examples of Sternritter using a variety of different Reishi weapons, from swords to guns to even large 10 barreled miniguns, which we had seen BG9 use. One of the most evident distinctions between the modern, empowered Quincy versus the traditional ways of the Quincy is showcased to us during the start of the Thousand Year Blood War arc. When Ichigo arrives within Hueco Mundo, he finds himself up against Sternritter J the Jail Kilge Oppi. In chapter 490, Kilge mocks Soken Ishida as a foolish old man who hangs on to the past. This is because he had rejected the studies and evolution of the Wandenreich Empire. We can see this clearly as Soken Ishida was the one who had passed down the knowledge about the Let's Steal to his grandson. Kilge states that the very notion of it was abandoned two years ago due to the fragility of Let's Steal. Basically, the Let's Steal is a Quincy ability that exchanges your current power for the peak power that you will ever have in terms of potential. It is used by Uryu during his battle against Mairi in chapter 124. Soken Ishida had instructed Uryu to wear the Sanrei glove for a period of seven seven days and seven nights and to train with it on. And the moment that he removes his Sanrei glove and activates the Let's Steal form, then he will end up losing his Quincy powers. Contrastingly, Yuhobak's Quincy possess a far superior technique to the Let's Steal. It is referred to as the Holy Form, and Kilge states that the two techniques are as different as heaven and earth. The Holy Form is the ultimate form of a Quincy. Their ability to manipulate spirit particles is greatly enhanced in this form. While in this form, they manifest two wings and a halo above their head. Both are made up of reishi and they sometimes undergo a physical transformation also. The differences between these two forms is that Let's Steal is severely limited. After you use it, you lose your powers. It's irreversible. It's a one and done move. Whereas the holy form is free to be used as many times as you wish, as long as you're comfortable to be at the mercy of Yuhobak's whim, who may end up casting Ashwalin and sacrificing you at a moment's notice. The new Quincy and the traditional Quincy are both able to use an ability called Holy Arrow. Traditional Quincy use it in order to create bow and arrows as their primary method of attack. But the modern Quincy under Yuhobak's control had developed the ability in order to form a variety of weapons around 200 years ago. Earlier in the video, I mentioned episode 24 of the Thousand Year Blood War arc and the flashback that occurs at the very beginning of the episode. This was one of the best anime editions that we've ever received because it reveals that over 1,000 years ago, within the capital of the Empire of Light, Yuhobak and Ichibe had a meeting where they were discussing a proposal for a non-aggression pact between the Soul Society and Yuhobak's Empire of Light. Ichibe suggested that Yuhobak should focus on his empire's prosperity, while the Shinigami, who he refers to as the Balancers, manage the three realms of Huekomundo, the World of the Living, and the Soul Society. Yuha is skeptical about Ichibe's offer as he feels like he's being deceived. The conversation then shifts to the Soul King, who Ichibe reveals was responsible for separating the three realms, which which were once unified into a singular world, going on to reveal that the Soul King had introduced the concept of death to reality. Yuha expresses his frustration with the state of reality as it is and the suffering of those that he has witnessed. All of the individuals that he has shared a fragment of his soul with, upon their death, he feels the emotions that they feel as they all have a shared fear of death. This is something that Yuha 
Hobak desires to rid from reality. As the discussion between Ichibe and Yuhobak falls apart, one of the Quincy soldiers attempts to attack Ichibe, but he effortlessly deflects her attack. Yuha then experiences visions of the Soul King's past, and he is horrified by what he sees. Despite Yuhobak possessing a powerful blue Dveen, Ichibe still manages to seal away Yuhobak's the almighty ability. He does so by using a manifestation of the Soul King's hand. This flashback reveals to us the scale of Yuhobak's empire, how Yuha ended up learning about the truth of the Soul King, and why he wasn't able to use the almighty shrift ability during his initial battle against the original Gotei 13. This trend of anime exclusive scenes which expand upon the history of the Quincy had began within the first core of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime. In episode 3 titled March of the Star Cross, we see Uryu looking through his father's archives as he desperately looks for answers about the new invaders. By this time, he hadn't known about who Yuhobak was, so he was still under the impression that he and his father were the only surviving Quincy. For some reason, Sokka and Ishida did not mention the existence of Yuhobak's Quincy to his grandson. Maybe he disregarded the Quincy Emperor song which promised the return of the Quincy King as a old folks tale, underestimating Yuhobak and his army, believing them to have been fully exterminated. Uryu tells his father that he has a right to know if other Quincy's exist, but Ryuken walking away tells him that he won't find any answers looking at the family archives. At the beginning of episode 6 titled The Fire, Uryu finds his grandfather's journal. Within it, he discovers that the Quincy were exterminated 1,000 years ago. This is also the episode where we learn about the original Gotei 13, and they were responsible for eliminating Yuhobak and his army. The journal entries reinforce this idea that the Quincy who followed Yuhobak had treated the Shinigami as enemies, whereas Sokka and Ishida, who represented traditional Quincy, had tried to make peace between the Shinigami and the Quincy. In chapter 46, Sokka and Ishida had told Uryu that he cannot bear to see a sad face, whether if it belongs to a Quincy or a Shinigami. I believe that Sokka and Ishida's indifference towards the two races had heavily influenced Uryu, which really underscores his motives within the story. A lot of emphasis is placed on Uryu's role within the story during the final arc. The manga, while it rushed his involvement, the anime on the other hand promises to expand Uryu's role. This is because Uryu ended up surviving Yuhobak's Ashwalan, a selection process where Yuhobak absorbs the power of impure Quincy in order to empower himself and the chosen Quincy. The fact that Uryu is the only known survivor of this process has been recognized by Yuhobak as he deems him to be his successor. It is speculated that Uryu possesses a unique power or quality that even Yuhobak with all of his knowledge has never encountered before. We are aware that this stems from the shrift letter that Uryu inherits. Yuha was the only one with the letter A as his shrift until Uryu awakened his own shrift ability, which we learn is A for the antithesis. Hashward later reveals that Uryu is the only one who is able to counter Yuhobak's The Almighty. Hopefully this ends up being explored more within the anime and Uryu continues to have more of a role and we get more new scenes involving him. So as you can see, via Yuhobak, a lot of innovations were introduced to the Quincy. These have allowed Yuhobak's army to become stronger in comparison to the traditional Quincy. And I hope that this video has helped you to understand the differences between Yuhobak's Empire of Light, which existed 1000 years ago, and after their defeat, they retreated into the shadows and became the Invisible Empire or the Wanden Reich, thus allowing the traditional Quincy who didn't agree with Yuhobak to thrive within the world of the living. And then at some point, Sokka and Ishida had escaped from the Invisible Empire using a portal device and had gone into the world of the living where other traditional Quincy families resided, like the Quincy Kurosaki family. I've really enjoyed exploring the differences between Yuhobak's new and improved Quincy versus the traditional Quincy. A lot of this information is subtly weaved into the manga and you really have to piece a lot of it together. But I want to know if there's anything about these two groups of Quincy that I've forgotten to mention, whether if it's their difference in ideology, their abilities that they use, or even details about their history which I haven't mentioned, then let me know in the comments. So definitely continue the discussion and lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this video and I cannot wait to see you in my next Bleach video. A massive thank you goes out to all of my amazing Patreon supporters for helping to make this video possible. If you also want to support the channel and see your name in the end of my videos, then check out my Patreon which has loads of perks like early video access and so much more. Thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.